it's day six, I think, something like that anyway. We're here in Louisville, we're in the Galt House. Again, I don't really film outside because it's a bit windy, it's a bit cold today. Not as cold as yesterday. Uh, we qualified for the one day Swiss uh, after an hour loss to some unknowns, Gear Helgamo, Boyer Brogland, that lot uh, in the cancel. No, do not want to join my own hotspot. Uh, so Kai's in the Kai's in the 0-25k Swiss day two. He's lying in joint second place, so he's doing all right. Uh, Christian Becker, who's also on Discord, beat us yesterday, so we're rooting for him to go all the way now. And then we can say we lost to the winners. Uh, we're actually in the other hotel today. There's a, these obviously two hotels uh, next to each other, and we're in the other one because that's where all the um, non NABC events and non you know not none of the big events are so none of the ones that matter none of the two day events so we're in the one day Swiss with John and Matt before Beans and I turn up to win the Cillador on Thursday Friday that is the plan Beans is nodding uh, there's the Garv the Garv is here the best player in the world the Garv um, uh, so yeah so this is today we haven't got a breakfast we've got a breakfast option today or maybe there is something I can't know. Oh yes, there is something, so I'll see what was. Oh, it looks like a, either a bagel or a donut. It looks like a bagel, so I'm going to have myself a morning bagel and maybe get a coffee. We're here early because Andy is view graphing and she oh. needs to start at half nine, which is when the Vanderbilt starts, and we're not in the Vanderbilt, so uh, weirdly we lost. It was a really good match. I mean, you feel bad when you lose a match that you were involved in till the end. Um, and obviously that would have been probably the biggest win of my life sort of thing in terms of just the caliber of the people we were going to beat but we didn't beat them so we're just going to do one day so today we're going to do the best we can in that and then uh so today uh still going to try our best but obviously the stakes are, are much lower than they were yesterday um so pressure's off we're just going to have fun and i'm going to have a look at the bookshop to see if i've got like half an hour because we're here half an hour early i've got half an hour to have a look to see if I can buy a book, because I usually try and buy one book at each of these events. Reading bridge books is enjoyable for me, and it's a good thing to do on the plane on the way back, I think. So uh, that's what I'm going to do. People loitering around, I'm going to get a bagel. I can toast it and get some cream cheese on it as well, maybe. So that's the plan. Uh, nom nom nom. Waiting for El Capitan, but this is one of the two rooms in the other hotel, the two big rooms in the other hotel. So there's uh, Matt, he's our good teammate. There's Beans, he's our bad teammate. Uh, and we've got, if you can see that sign over there, top flight Swiss teams and then bracketed teams. So the whole room will be people not playing in a two day event, just a one day teams event and you're either bracketed, which is capped at 4,000 master points or something, so 3,000 or something like that. And then within that you get put into groups of seven based on total master points. Um, and we're, oh look at this, hand dealing boards. Um, but yeah, so this is going to be filling up. We're like 20 minutes before the start of play. Uh, we need to sign in over there when when Captain gets here and we'll be Team McAllister again. Um, and then you can see that divider there splits the other room and that's all the side pairs. So the one day open pairs, mid-flight pairs, gold rush pairs and that sort of thing. So just, just the health of the size of the tournaments is really good at the Nationals. This is what makes me, there's a Mr. ATC, if you can see him. He's not waving to me, but there he is in the white shirt. Uh, so it's really good. And there's Mini and Kopi. So I think they failed to win yesterday. They were on uh, Connie Goldberg's team, I think. Uh, so they'll be in top flight Swiss teams. Um, they're from Britain. And a lot of other people I start to recognize after being to my fourth national. So. Uh, we're going to have a good time today. We're going to try and remember some hands, and uh, we'll see you soon. So I don't know if you can see the queue all the way to about that there are people still waiting to pay for the bracketed round robin teams, which should have started seven minutes ago. So in America, in, so you can see how full the room is. If we just stand up and have a look around, we're about to play someone from Discord, Harsh Duality, I think apparently. Um, you can see every table's full. There's people milling around, and uh, technically we should have started seven minutes ago. Some people are shuffling and dealing. Some people are sort of side, but yeah. So the whole room's full, and the 
top flight Swiss will be somewhere and then the bracketed Swiss will be somewhere else as well um, on bracketed round robin but the queuing up to here and now I was speaking to Andy and in New Zealand and the UK do something similar we would just pay for the full congress at the start of the week and enter what we want um, and I don't know why they do that here I, obviously every day is different and some events are different prices or whatever but there should be maybe a you know a thousand dollars play what you want I don't know for the week I don't know what the price would have to be for that to be set acceptable but it would save all this it would save all this they're waiting to pay they're not just here to say sign in and being given a team slip they're waiting to pay so it just feels really inefficient so I mean you know we're going to start 15 to 20 minutes late I think um, the big queue at the side we've got our table assignments we're waiting for our opponents but no one's moved yet so um, uh, but yeah we Beans and I are just shuffling the boards and um, yeah could be better uh, we won the first match by 44 imps. Um, uh, stomped them, stomped them. Really good. Um, in terms of interesting boards, there weren't that many. We caught them in three hearts, which is good. Defended that well. Took it for 500. Teammates almost made two. Uh, Undoubled, so we win some imps there. Beans. Beans bid to a good slam. I think maybe the bidding could be slightly different, but Beans, Beans did very well, I think, to make a move maybe maybe a bit fortunate I had a good hand he had ace king tight ace king uh, ace king x ace king jack 10 9 to 6 stiff king third so he's got a big end and he opened the heart I bid two diamonds game forcing so already in his mind slam slam zone doesn't know what slam so he bids two hearts showing six uh, showing six but he could be like he could have five hearts and four clubs and a weak hand and not you know not being able to bid three clubs that's fine oh you go for a good pass um and then over two hearts i bid three clubs and he bid three hearts it's sort of set, set, either setting hearts in a strong hand or worried about three n and showing you know good heart suit so over this i bid four hearts now clearly i haven't got a spade stop you've got ace king x and i i'm unlikely to have queen x of hearts i'm unlikely to have me i could have too low and be five five in the minds or something or i could have like a stiff or a stiff queen or it's just a small stiff so beans judged well i've game forced he's got such a good hand he bid key card now i think it's probably better from his point of view to just bid four spades and allow me to evaluate the types of points i've got if i've got aces and kings in the minors or a stiff queen of hearts, I can make a move. And if I haven't, if I've got bad suits or a pushy two over one, I can potentially sign off. But Beans just bid key card. I should two aces, no queen of hearts, obviously. Beans bid six. It was pretty easy to play. You can actually take the heart finesse and make seven if you're in seven. Um, but 12 tricks will just sort of lay down. You've got two stops in every suit. Um, and your hearts are so good that you just lose the queen. And we're having fun over here. <laughs> and we're having fun over here. So. Good, good bid beans. It wasn't that interesting, but it was the most interesting decision, I think, in the first hand. I think four spades might be better, but he moved anyway, so that's good. So round two, we get to score up. Um, this is probably one for you. We had a bad board here, and you pick up... Uh, uh, which hand am I going to give you? I'm going to give you this hand. You've got jack x, king third, king third, ace fifth, and it's gone past to you. We don't open bad 11s, your clubs are really bad. And all you've got five of them. You know, you don't want it to go one club, one spade and have to rebid two clubs on this or have to bid the no chump on, you know, I, I don't know. So um, we're, we, we don't open many 11s. So Matt, so this got a pass and then it goes one heart in third, two hearts in partner Michaels and we're vulnerable. So um, partner won't be stupid, opposite of pass time, partner won't be stupid and it's one for you to discuss what your methods are here how do you show this hand and what should you do so you could bid three clubs which is pass or correct you could th bid three diamonds which must say I want to play in diamonds or spades or diamonds or four clubs depending on what happens so three diamonds must be sort of some, some sort of like um, false preference or something um, or you could bid 2N. Now you don't really want to support spades, you've got a fit for either minor, whichever minor partner has. And it's one for your partnerships which shows more points. Because you need to be doing something with the sand opposite a vulnerable bid. And I think you should play that 2N shows 
some in interest depending on what partner bids it must show some values and three clubs and th three clubs should just be there um, and um, we had we haven't discussed it Beans with three clubs I with three diamonds and Beans passed so I think Beans should move over three diamonds if he thinks he hasn't shown values already but if he thinks three clubs have shown values then we're just on different wavelengths so we got a bad board there mainly because six diamonds makes everything makes your king of hearts is actually working because they've got a uh, partner's got a stiff ace so maybe they've opened light in third didn't see their hands um, and they've obfuscated um, our route to six diamonds which we're probably not going to get to but we should be getting to game I think five diamonds false spades or three and all make um, so uh, that's going to be a swing out, I think. We played two Brazilian pairs and at the other table, their, their teammates are Stefano and Ben, who I know from the UK, both lovely guys. Um, so Matt's playing uh, Mr. Muscles over uh, at the other table, but um, the good news is that Matt is sat in the West seat and at our table, West played five hands, so there's a chance that Matt can flatten all these games they bid against us. Um, yeah. We do have another decision in this round as well good director that guy. Okay. Um, you pick up ace queen nine to six um, stiff three to the ten ace jack x and it goes pass pass again Bean, beans kept passing he was rubbish today um, the cards were not our way in this set and they open one uh, club on your right so you uh, the colors where we were favorable um, you could be two spades, but you're a bit too good. You could still make four spades here. And if you bid two spades, <laughs> well, historically, Beans won't play me for as good a hand as this. <laughs> if he's gone past, past the club, two spades. I usually have five when I do this. So with your good spade suits, you can bid a spade and then bid two spades later, maybe, or compete later. You've got ace track extra clubs, which is good over the club bidder. I mean, they might not actually have clubs, but it's you know when they do, it's good. And then you've got ace, queen, nine to five, six. So I bid one spade. The next hand passes, and Beans it's two diamonds. Now, systemically, we agreed that this is natural, non constructive non-forcing. Um, so Beans has got a constructive two diamond bid, and he hasn't he hasn't opened two diamonds. So he's likely to have five good ones, probably. If he's got six, he's got some weird hand. Maybe he's four six in the reds or something. Um, and it probably denies three spades. And the hand on your right bids two hearts opposite a pass partner bids two out so he's probably got the best hand at the table um, or he might just be very distributional so I could bid two spades or I could bid three diamonds and if we're going to make game like let's say Beans has got a hand too good to open a week two and he hasn't opened one or whatever he might have we might still be able to make five diamonds so the most likely game here is probably five diamonds probably um, maybe maybe Beans has got king x of spades and we might make four spades but I decided to bid three diamonds and if it goes three hearts pass pass I might bid three spades or something knowing that we're going to have a fit somewhere and we're favourable anyway so I bid three diamonds this goes pass pass double um, now I could bid three spades now um, uh, but there's a danger now that if Beans has got short spades they go into a doubling rhythm the hand on my left might have passed because they've actually got values but their values are in spades um, so I didn't want to bid three spades now because I might get doubled. Uh, so I, and, and I don't want to kind of go three spades double, four diamonds double. Because it's, if that's the case, if the spades are over me, it's probably not going to be a good board. So I passed, and it goes four clubs, pass, pass. So in the defence to four clubs, think about what's happening. You've got a singleton heart, and the hand on your left has supported clubs when they could have signed off in three hearts. So beans is marked with hearts. If they, they can't have an eight card heart fit here, because they would have just bid three hearts, it was one trick lower. So Beans must have five hearts, which means Beans must be something like one, five, six, one, or something. You can almost place his hand from the bidding. And so if he's one, five, six, one, you've got three tricks in defense of this. And where are their tricks coming from uh, if you double them? So do you decide to double them? Like you're pretty light, but you've got three tricks is there a chance that four clubs is making and that's what I tried to decide once I worked out Beans' shape or rough shape you don't quite know what he's got but uh, you know he's probably got five hearts so he could be something like one five six one or two two five five one with five good diamonds um, is there a chance this doesn't make yes there is there is a chance this makes if you double and there is a club honour in dummy they will find your jack of clubs 
and so doubling loses you a trick whenever there's a club owner and dummy which means doubling might let it make when it otherwise wouldn't um, so I decided to pass and maybe it's a bit wimpy maybe at match points I should just double because 200's a top um, and the other reason you should be doubling here potentially is if there's a chance it's more likely to go two off than make and at teams you don't really want to let it make but there is a chance it goes two off is there? maybe not Beans' values aren't going to be well placed we're probably only going to make one diamond trick we might not make two club tricks we're probably going to make a spade um, and uh, and Beans might not have good enough hearts and they're going to be finessable anyway so I took the low road and I passed and four clubs went one off so you know if there was a club owner in dummy maybe they could have made it I don't know so I felt fine um, passing this um, but it took me a while to pass so maybe I've already given the game away um, but he doesn't know why I'm thinking. He doesn't know whether I'm going to try and bid four diamonds or four spades or something. So he doesn't necessarily know I've got the jack of clubs. Um, but the longer I thought, maybe, uh, the more likely we'll pick my club up. But he couldn't do it. So that might be some... That might be imps in, because I don't think they can make four spades. The spades are 4-1. The Peens has got a stiff king. So can we make four diamonds? You had my shape right. I'm 1561. One, Jack 9, 6 diamonds, Jack 5 hearts, I have stiff pink spades for you. So just make 4 diamonds. And where do all your hearts go? You can rough 1 and throw 2 away, but you've still got 1 loser. Yeah, so I think it goes 1 off. Yeah. I think, I think, we'll see. <laughs> uh, so we're in Chipotle, and you might hear the loud music behind us. So I'll speak a bit louder. Um, we won the match by 11 imps. Uh, the first four boards, we had some really interesting decisions. Uh, future Steve's going to talk to you potentially if, I've, if I need some runtime about a defence to four hearts that Beans and I made. I felt, felt we defended that really well. And then I'm just going to show you a Steve Classic four card overcall. Here you go. This is your hand. You've got Ace King Jack X, King Queen 10. You've got King Jack 8 to 5 and a singleton club. And everyone's vulnerable, and they open one diamond on your right, natural diamonds. Um, I would bid a spade nearly always here. I mean, you could also bid a no trump, I think, a no trump's possible, but I generally, with this many diamonds, uh, like overcalling four card suits. I think it's a good thing. I think your partner's going to be short in diamonds which means they're going to have spade support a lot of the time and you get to maybe some 4-4 four, four spade fits when you otherwise you bid one and it gets passed out you might make four spades if partner's got like a six count and queen to four spades and a stiff diamond you might be making four spades here and that's the sort of hand you're playing for by overcalling one spade instead of a no trump so overcall the spade um, and the next hand passes your partner bids two spades which is weak with spades uh, the hand on your right bids three diamonds now I really wanted to double this but I think double is I don't know maybe it's penalties I think it might be but I wasn't sure 100% sure and Beans can work out from his hand it's probably penalties but I passed and maybe Beans can protect with a double and then you know I pass and we get a lot and the hand on the left wakes up and bids three end well they've probably got a stack of spades here then maybe they have five spades the queen ten or something and we're trapping um, because how can they possibly bid three no trumps when they didn't bid a no trump? So it's likely they've got five spades on my left. Um, pass and pass. And so, do you think you're beating 3M? Almost certainly. You've got two spade tricks, two diamond tricks, a heart trick. You're, and they've got no source of tricks, I don't think. Beans will have clubs over the over Declarer. And even though the spades won't be on side I don't have to touch spades I can win the first spade and switch and not set the clever spades up and just you know hold on for my trick so I whacked it and this goes pass pass and the hand that bids three diamonds pulls it to four diamonds I know what I'm doing with that whack we got 800 Beans is sat there fretting he's got no defensive tricks and he took none and we got 800 um, so that felt really good uh, I made three chum tricks two heart tricks and a spade for uh, minus three so my rules for overcalling four card suits are uh, one, you have a good suit, and two, have length in the suit that's bid. You need, a, you need a hand that wants to take an action that hasn't got an action to take a lot of the time. And that's a hand that normally would want to double, but you haven't got the right shape for double. And that often means you're long in the suit on your right. And when you're long in the suit on your right, your partner's going to have shortness in that suit. 
um, and which means they're going to have support for you so it's less dangerous to overcall a four card suit what you shouldn't be doing is overcalling a four card suit when you've got a singleton in the suit open you should just do a takeout double instead um, you've just got much more descriptive bids to do on the hand so uh, we got 800 there which was win 12 uh, teammates win three diamonds not double to minus 200 so we will take that um, and we're going on uh, we're on like like 38, 39, 40 VPs after three. So we're in a good position. Three more wins, potentially we'll, we'll podium. Um, and we're here at Chipotle for lunch. Nom, nom, nom. Uh, chicken? Some sort of taco, I think. So we are doing John and Matt proud. We're underbidding a bit, but still winning, which is pretty good. Uh, we have won four out of five. We're on like, what are we on now? 60. 68 VPs after five or something like that. So on 68 after five, we won't win. There were two teams way ahead. So whichever team of those two won the match that they played against each other, it's probably going to be uncatchable. So we're trying for a podium finish, so it should be good. I'm going to pop the following hand on the screen for you. It's a play problem. You get to three no chumps, nor dummy has shown both majors, and your right hand opponent doubled three no chumps. Unopposed, they didn't bid at all, and they doubled three no chumps for a spade lead. Um, they didn't get one. You went King of Diamonds lead. So, what are your thoughts? How are you going to make this? Um, if you count your tricks, uh, you've got to hope the hearts come in. If they don't, you've got no chance. And we're playing teams, so I'm just going to assume the hearts break. Uh, the hand on my right is going to have spades. The hand on my left might not have any spades here because they didn't lead one at trick one. And at trick two, you have to let the King of Diamonds hold. I don't think you can take it. At trick two, they switched to a club. And you went club, small, queen. So this is a dilemma I was situated with and how am I going to make this and if you count your tricks you've got five hearts and three aces and no real legitimate chances yourself to play to make another trick. So uh, obviously if there's like maybe a singleton ten of spades on your left you might have a chance but let's say let's say there isn't and there wasn't. What's your chance? Well your only possibility is to end play someone and you can either end play a left hand opponent to play a diamond into your ace jack or you can end play your right hand opponent to potentially give you dummies jack of spades. If you strip all their non-spade cards out and um, maybe play ace of spades, spade to the nine or something. I, I haven't quite figured it out. Um, but what you need them to do is, for both end plays to work, you need them probably to not switch to a diamond through and to potentially lay down the king of spades. So when, the queen, when it went club to the queen, I ducked it. And uh, what I want them to do is lay down the king of spades. Now my end play works against either opponent. Uh, they played the king of spades, which is what they did. And uh, this is where I heard. I can do a bit better here. But what you're aiming to do from this point onwards is you're now looking at... Um, you stole your eight tricks. You're going to cash five hearts and then you've got three aces in the other suit. And then you're going to exit in something to the point where all they've got is either a diamond if you exit with your left-hand opponent or um, uh, spades if you exit with your right-hand opponent. And the correct line to do to have a chance of making this, assuming it's makeable, is you've got to win this. And the reason is... You know your left-handed opponent has the jack of clubs because when it went a club, it went small queen. And you need your left-handed opponent to have not only the jack of clubs, but you need them to have ace, uh, sorry, king jack, which means that the right-handed opponent has no entry to cash a queen of spades, which is now going to be high, or to lead another diamond through, which sort of breaks up your position here. Uh, if they lead another diamond through, you're just uh, a trick short, effectively, for the end play to work. So... If you take the... I didn't do this. I ducked the spade and then I, I, I struggled with the rest of it now. Uh, if you duck the spade, they play a second diamond through and now you can't maintain the diamond end play. Um, and there's no club end play and there's no spade end play now. Uh, mainly because you know your left-hand opponent has a jack of clubs. So what you should do is take the king of spades to the ace. You've now lost two tricks. And you need to play your left-hand opponent to have king jack of clubs, which they did and king and queen of diamonds which they did and once your ace of spades holds you need to cash five hearts throwing your losing spade away and maybe a small diamond or a small club and then you need to play a club off dummy um, 
And what you're doing is you're just going to cover right hand opponent's card. So if you play a club off dummy and the right hand opponent plays like the nine, you just put the ten on this. And you, if they win and then try an exit, you need to play them from king jack eight of clubs, which they had. You then they play, cover the ten of clubs. You, they win. They can exit with the king of clubs. You can win that and play your seven of clubs. And the eight of clubs wins on your left. And now they've only got diamonds left. So the full hand's there. I could have made that. I think... I was, I was a bit shocked when my left-hand opponent showed up with a spade and he didn't lead one at trick one and he didn't switch to one at trick two. So I thought spades are six and nine. I mean, it doesn't actually change my play, but I think I was a bit lax and loose and Matt spotted immediately I needed to win the spade. So I mistimed the end play. I tried for an end play, didn't make it. We actually lost two imps. Teammates beat four hearts. And four hearts has no play. Once you know spades are breaking so badly, you know you can't rough any spades in your hand. You're going to get over roughed. Um, and Four Hearts just hasn't got a shot. 3N did have a shot on that lead, on that defence. Um, but I think if he leads a spade at trick one, again, I've got no shot as well. So I was in a position where I could have gained a swing. We did, and we only lost two imps, and we won that match by 14 imps anyway. So uh, that gives us a 16-4 win. We won, uh, we're probably like in the top five teams in the room, and so hopefully we can try and win the last match and finish in the top three. Um, so we're done. We got absolutely trounced. We lost board one, win an imp, and then after the dust has settled, we've lost by 54. So you've got uh, a lead problem. I'm going to get Beans' hand. Your hand is too low. Queen Jack, uh, nine. Queen Jack nine to six. Um, singleton. singleton diamond, and then three clubs to the queen or something? Queen 10 and 4th, okay, so that's your hand on screen. I've Beans has given me it now, I've got it, it's in my head, didn't actually see what he had. And it's red, it's um, we're unfavorable, and partner opens an unfavorable two spades. Uh, and it goes double, you pass, you haven't got anything to say. Um, and then the hand on your left thinks for ages and ages and ages and merges with four spades, which is a slam try in diamonds. Uh, so this goes past some other bids blah 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 and after uh, some key card and some optional key cards and whatever they get to six diamonds played by the hand on your right and it's your lead at trick one what are you leading what were you what would you lead Matt shakes his head beans beans shook his head partners open a vulnerable two spades but you've got a five count and a bid slam so I don't know, has partner got the ace of spades? Has someone got a void spade? I don't know exactly what's happening here. But it seems not unreasonable to lead a spade given partner's bid. If you're not leading a spade, what are you leading? Probably the queen of hearts seems safe. The hand on your right likes to have four hearts if anyone has four hearts. So you're not really going to give a trick up to the ten. So I think it's a choice. I mean, you're never leading a club. If you're not leading a spade, you're leading a heart. And I don't think realistically a trump leads right. Partner could have something like queen third diamond. Um... I'm just just film me one second partner could have queen third diamond uh so maybe a diamond's not right so make your plan what would you lead would you lead partner suit and get shouted out if you don't or would you lead the queen of hearts and just like a bit of a safer lead or whatnot uh you need to lead the queen of hearts we've got two cashing hearts against the six diamonds if you lead a spade you get a bit of a chuckle the partner's got <laughs> so dummy's got ace king queen of spades tight um, and king one heart, so a heart lead, queen of hearts lead through the king, you get the first two heart tricks. Um, and partner had his bid, partner had seven spades, the jack ten, nine, and an ace. Um, he's seven, two, two, two. He's got a seven count. Um, and it, with seven, two, two, two vulnerable, it's a bad shape for preempting three spades. And because our three spade bids are also sensible, when you've got a bad seven, you often have to downgrade it to two. So that's what I did. I jacked 10, 9 to 7. And, uh, yeah, but it didn't really matter. Let's say Beans leads the Queen of Hearts. I mean, you know, we win 10 imps on the board or something. And we still lose by 40. And it's still a 20 nil. So, uh, you know, the team, you know, Matt came back saying, how, how have we scored? And Matt says we've done awfully and Beans and I went well let's not bother scoring up then because we had got no good positions really uh, yeah I'm not going to go through many more hands there I've had a really good time teaming with John and Matt it's been fun light hearted you know we lost there and no one's feeling bad for messing up so 
you know, because we'd all had bad broads and, you know, you shrug your shoulders. So we were in the running for a podium. We won't have hit a podium. We're probably going to finish in the overalls because we were on like 66 after five or 68, 68 after five. And after six, we're on 68. Uh, so tomorrow we're in the Silidor and we're going to win that, aren't we, Matt? Heck yes. We got it. We've got it, yes. And obviously he needs more than one introduction on our vlogs. We have the wonderful... One point of any kind. Ewan McNay. Hey guys, how you doing? Uh, he's here now. We're playing with Ewan on the weekend. So we're going to have a drink with Ewan while we're waiting for Andy to finish view graph. Um, and then we're going to go back, play some games and be back for some pairs tomorrow. We've done a lot of teams over the last few days. So we're going to do some match point pairs um, tomorrow. OK, so I'll see you soon. Filming these videos is time consuming, very hard. And obviously getting to and playing in these venues is financially difficult sometimes. Uh, thanks to all the people who support me on Patreon and if you'd like to do that too what it does is it allows me to spend time at these events making videos spend time at home editing these videos and getting them out for you so if you like them and want to help support me please join this growing list of people who are doing so on Patreon there are a few different levels you can do so and any support is appreciated even if that support is just sharing and liking my videos um, so thanks very much everyone